Welcome everybody to another video tutorial from scriptingisfun.com. I'm Mike Page, and in this video tutorial we're going to learn how to make a simple brick breaker game. So in this game, just like in uh, the ones it's patterned after, we can bounce the ball off the paddle, and we break the bricks, we have some power-ups, these are extra life power-ups that are dropping right now, um, and when we clear all the bricks we'll make the level end, we're keeping track of score and all sorts of things. So we're going to go over all the basic mechanics of how to make a game like this, uh, and this will be a lot of fun. So let's get right to it. So let's start by making a new project here in Unity. So we'll call this my Brick Breaker game. This is a 2D game, so we'll set that to 2D. And we don't need analytics or anything like that. We'll set our uh, location here to our Documents folder. We'll just create our new project, and it'll take a moment for it to open that up in Unity. Here's our new project opened up in Unity. So the first thing we want to do is just make sure our camera is set up and uh, we'll get some sprites in here to start building our different pieces. So on the camera, you're in an orthographic camera, you can decide how big a space you want your camera to see. It seems like the default five is fine. And if you want to change your background color, that's right here. So I am going to go ahead and just make this kind of a black background, uh, but you can pick whatever color you like. So that's my camera setup. The next thing we need to do is we need to get some uh, sprites in here. This is a 2D game, so we're going to start by working on our paddle. So you can do this a couple of ways. Um, you could go out into a program like Photoshop or GIMP and you can make yourself a uh, 2D paddle uh, and make your sprites for that. Uh, or if you like, you can just use some of Unity's built-in sprites. So that's what we're going to do here. I'm going to go to Hierarchy. 2D object and I'm going to just make a sprite and in the sprite here you'll see there's a spot to tell it what sprite to use. If we click the circle here we can see just some of Unity's default sprites so we could just pick like the UI sprite if we wish and that'll put that dot there and then we can go over here so let's kind of zoom in on that sprite and if you're in your rec tool this one right here your rectangle tool you can just drag that out to whatever size you want for your paddle. So you could do something like that if you like. Uh, and it doesn't look too bad on the screen there. Uh, and then you can, since it's a white, we can actually go in here and we can color this whatever color we like. So for now we're just going to use this built-in uh, default sprite here and we're just going to make it the size that we want it to be. So let's make kind of a nice big paddle here. Maybe something around a scale of 15 and maybe we'll do two on the Y for now. Uh, and then let's zoom out so we can see our screen and we'll just drag this down towards the bottom for where we want it to be. Somewhere down in here. All right, and then we'll rename this to Paddle. And we have the visual part of our Paddle done for now. All right, the next thing we want to make sure we have set before we uh, get any farther is make sure in your game view that you're in standalone. Uh, pick your resolution that you want to play the game in before we get too much further in. Unity a lot of times by default is in free aspect, which as I change the size of my camera here in the game view, see how it's changing the size over here in my scene view? We don't want that because we want to know where the edges of our screen are going to be. So always set your resolution. I'm going to use standalone for right now. Uh, but depending on which kind of device you're building this for, you may want to set a different resolution. So there we go. Now it doesn't change uh, its aspect ratio when we resize. Okay, so we've got our paddle graphic in here. The next thing we want to be able to do is get this paddle to move back and forth. So what we're going to need is uh, a script on here that's going to get some input from our keyboard and we'll uh, then react to that. So in our project panel here, let's create a C sharp script and we'll call this the paddle script. Then we'll open that up in mono develop. Here's our paddle script in mono develop. So the first thing we're going to need to do is get some inputs and 
uh, and then move the paddle according to it. So anytime we're dealing with input, we want to make sure we're working in our update function because this is the one that runs every frame. So we always want to get the most up-to-date button presses. But what we want to do is get input from the left and right arrow keys, and we can also get input from the A and the D key on our keyboard. Now Unity has an input already built into its input manager that does this. So we're going to make a float variable here. We'll just call this horizontal. And we're going to set that equal to every frame input. So this goes into the input system. And what we want to do is we want to get an axis. And the axis that we want is called horizontal. You need to make sure you spell this exactly the way that this is spelled here because this is its name in the input manager. So you need to match that up. And if you've never seen the input manager, let's just go take a peek real quick. So if you go into Unity and you go to Edit, Project Settings, Input, you'll see all your input manager access axes here. And here is horizontal. And if I open that up, you'll see here is its name. That's why we have to match it exactly in our code. This gets us the left and right arrow and also the A and the D key. So this is where you would set your keys up for negative and positive directions. All right, so that's what that looks like. So what happens then is when I get this, this is gonna return me a value between a negative one and a positive one. So if I'm on one of my left keys, so my left arrow or my A key, I'm going to get um, a negative one. If I'm not holding any of those keys down, this will be a zero. And if I'm pushing on the right arrow or the D key, I'm going to get a positive one. So this just gives me a number based off of the keys that I'm, that I'm pressing, a positive or negative number, which is going to help us with controlling our direction. Once we have this, we can use it then to move our uh, paddle. And so what we can do is we can go to the transform of our paddle. And then we can say dot translate. Translate is a method that will move our transform in the direction of our vector three that we're going to put here in these parentheses. So we want to move the paddle on the x axis. So we're going to say vector, and actually we can do a vector two here because we're in 2D. We can say vector two dot right, which uh, is a vector that gives us a one in the x position of the vector two and a zero in the y. We can then take that times our horizontal, which is our input. So if no buttons are being pressed, that would be zero, which means we will have zero movement. Uh, if we get uh, left uh, press, that'll be a negative one. So then we'll have a negative direction of movement. And if we're on our right arrow, we'll get a positive, which will give us a positive direction of movement. So now this is only going to move, um, this isn't going to really move fast or have control over how we move. We also do want to take this times time dot delta time. Time dot delta time will uh, slice this movement up over a second's worth of time. This gets us in a time based movement instead of a frame based movement. And as you know, frame rate always changes. So if you don't convert it to time based, then your, your uh, game will run at different speeds on different computers, and depending on what your computer is doing, it might even slow down or speed up while you're playing it. So this is our basic framework for using a transform.translate. Now to get uh, a little more control over how fast we're moving, we're gonna make ourselves a variable up at the top. So let's make a public float, and we will call this speed. And then we can take all of this times our speed, and we can set that out in the inspector, and then we can actually play test this to see what a good speed is. We could also in the future affect the speed of our paddle by doing power ups or power downs, which could affect our paddle speed uh, in a positive or negative way. So this will now cause our paddle to move based off of our horizontal input. So let's save the script. We'll go back out into Unity here. We have to uh, attach the script to our paddle. So here's the paddle. I'm just going to drag the script from the project panel into the inspector here for the paddle. And then let's give it a speed, because if we leave this at zero now, we won't move at all. So let's maybe try a five. Let's see what five feels like. And when we play now, 
when we push our arrow keys, you see that our paddle is moving back and forth. So that's a 5. If we went to something like a 10, you can see we're moving a whole lot faster. So this is where we'll have to play test a little bit when we get uh, a little further into the game. So I think maybe I like, maybe, uh, let's try 7. Yeah, let's stick with the 7 for now. Now, you notice I've been playing with this as I've been in play mode. Uh, so when I go out of play mode, it reverts back to what I had in there before. So let's just put that back to a 7 for now. And now it should remember. So the next thing we want to do here is, as our paddle's moving, you notice how it's getting off the edges of the screen. So uh, we want to have some way of limiting our paddle's range of motion so that when it gets right towards the edge here, something like this, that we make it stop. All right. So one thing we can do here in the method that we're going to use here is we're just going to be checking its coordinates on the x-axis. So you can see right here when it gets to the edge of the left edge of the screen, we are in an x position of about a negative 5.6. Since the camera is at 0, 0 here, uh, we should be at a positive 5.6 roughly on this side. So we want to keep our paddle between a negative 5.6 on the X and a positive 5.6 on the X. So let's go into our script and put in that, that uh, control. Matter of fact, let's make a few variables up here at the top. Let's make a public float for right, uh, let's see, right screen edge. And let's put a public float for the left screen edge. That way we can uh, change these numbers. Um, if we decide to change our screen size later, all we got to do is type numbers in and not come back into our script. So we're going to fill these with the right and the left screen edge on the X coordinate. And then down here, after we move our player, so we're going to move him first, and then we're going to check to see if he got out of bounds here, if he got off too far to the side. So we would say if uh, transform dot position dot x. So we're looking at our current position on the x axis. If that becomes less than our left screen edge, so that means that uh, that X is getting too far to the left, so we're starting to go off the ledge on, uh, left edge of the screen. Then what we want to do is just change our transform dot position, and we have to change it to a new. So we can do a vector two here because we're working in two D, a new vector two, where we're going to give it the left screen edge for the X. And on the Y, we're going to feed it in whatever it currently is at the Y. So that's in our transform position dot Y, like so. So this will build a new vector 2, which is an XY coordinate. It will feed the X in the left screen edge, because that's as far as we want to let it go. And then we'll feed it in its current position on the Y axis by going to the paddle's transform, looking at its position, and getting its Y coordinate so that it won't move up or down at all. Okay, now that handles the left edge of the screen. To do the right edge, it's just the same thing. So I'm going to copy and paste this in. This time, i got to check to see if it's getting bigger than the right screen edge. So I'm going to change that to a greater than, and then type in right screen edge. If that's the case, we want its position to go to the right screen edge, and then transform position Y is where we want it to be on the Y. So just make sure you don't get your less than and your greater than mixed up. Make sure you got your left screen edge for the left side and your right screen edge for the right side. And if we save this and go out and set our variables, we should be able to uh, limit the movement of the paddle to the screen. So I'm going to go back out into Unity here. Let's click in on our paddle. And over here now I've got right screen edge and left screen edge. So if I remember correctly, and let's just double check here, if I grab my paddle and I move it over until it's just about to go off the edge of the screen here, you'll see that we're at about a negative 5.6. So on the left side, we'll put a negative 5.6 in there. And then since this is uh, symmetrical, because the camera is at 0, 0, see, the camera is at 0, 0, so that means that uh, since the camera is the same width from both sides of the center, 
that we can just feed in the positive of the screen edge here. So that would be a 5.6. All right, so now we should be limiting our movement. Let's just test it out and see what happens. So as I play now and I get to the edge there, see I cannot go off the edge now. And if you notice, it just puts me right to the 5.6 up here. If I go to the left, it puts me to the negative 5.6 on the X. All right, so there we have it. We are now limiting the motion of the paddle to the edges of our screen. All right, let's set the paddle up for uh, some other things it's going to need. This paddle is going to have to be collided with by the ball that we put in here. So it is going to need a collider. So let's just go to Add Component. We're in a 2D game, so we need Physics 2D. And let's give it a, a Polygon Collider. I'm going to give it a Polygon Collider because I'm going to use the collider and the built-in physics system here in Unity to get the uh, ball bouncing action. So if I put a polygon collider on it, and let's zoom in on it here in our scene view, that gives me a collider that has more than four sides. I can give it some extra sides here. So first of all, let's just go ahead and um, on the paddle, let's go to the polygon collider here. We're going to edit the collider and we can move these points in. So first of all, let's get this matching more of the actual edges of my, my uh, shape here. And you can see it's got a few extra points in here just because of uh, the shape of this. So like this point right here, I really don't need. So I can click down on it and hit delete and it will go away. Let's bring this point in right here. And then we are going to want a couple of points here. So what I want to do is I want the paddle to, um, when it gets kind of over to the this side of the paddle, I want it to bounce things off this way. Uh, if I want to add a point, I can just click and hold and it will add a point here. Same thing when I get uh, about a third of the way down the paddle this way, I want to bounce it that way. Now that's pretty pronounced, so let's bring it down a little bit. And we are going to be above the edge of our paddle some, so we may have to tweak this so that it uh, doesn't look too crazy when we're out in our game. But we are zoomed in pretty close here. And we could also get away with just lowering these corners some more here like so, so that it, if it hits the edge here, we'll see a little overlap, but it should bounce off. So we might even want to bring that over just a little bit more and a little bit more. So we are going to try to make a shape something like this uh, so that we get that ability to bounce the ball in the more the direction that we choose. So that's a polygon collider that we're going to put on our uh, shape here on our paddle. All right, so at this point, our paddle is all set up. Uh, it's ready for um, it's ready for action here, so to speak. So again, if we play, we've got the paddle's movement, and we've got the collider set up on top of it. So he's all ready to interact with the ball. In the next video, we're going to add the ball into our game and get that moving around and bouncing off of our paddle. And we'll have to build some little walls around the outside here so that it will bounce off the walls as well. So looking forward to that next installment. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful. And please, as always, feel free to leave comments below. I try to answer those uh, as quickly as I can. And uh, have a great day.